Welcome back. You're listening to Westchester Talk Radio, produced by Shark Creative and made possible by Entergy, Indian Point Energy Center, where they are literally helping keep the lights on and continue to support the community as they always have right through April of 2021. Our friends over at La Polis Electric, where you're never left in the dark, they do a great job uh, offering a 24-hour emergency service, and they are truly on top of the COVID-19 pandemic during taking all these precautions needed to provide a safe and healthy environment. Check out their podcast series called Live Wire, produced by Shark Creative, and can be found on demand at lapolislectric.com. Well, today we have a special treat. This is Isolation Therapy Episode 21. And I have with us today Mary Olson Menzel, the president of MVP Executive Search and Development, leadership and career coach, recruiter, speaker, facilitator, and her partner, Melissa Hook Shabazian, who is the co-founder of Spark Insight Coaching, executive coach specializing in service design and organizational development. Ladies, what a pleasure it is to see you both. Um, thank you for being here today. And together you have formed spark insight coaching and um i welcome you how are how are you doing how are you how are you doing with with everything that's going on mary tell us how you're feeling today well first of all thank you andrew for having us on here it's quite an honor uh, mel and i are excited to be here and we are hanging in there um we we have had an interesting shift in our business but um we are, the lights are on and we're moving forward full steam ahead. Yeah, that, well, that's, that's good to hear. Um, you know, we have to do that. There's no choice really, right? You, you've got to move forward, always moving forward. Um, Mel, how are you doing? How, how are things going for you? Going well, thank you. Thank you so much for having us on. Um, it's been such a period of time to uh, have to turn on that agility and adaptability. So we've been doing our best, but we've uh, really found that it's it's a moment of solidarity for a lot of us, and it's great to be there for our clients, and it's great to get out there. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, you know, certainly we're in unprecedented times, and it calls for different kinds of measures. But uh, you know, we want to certainly offer our listeners an opportunity to learn from you. Um, first thing I'd just like to know is tell us a little bit about the business and how, how the two of you come together. Um, you know, how, how did that start? Give us a, just give us a little history into that. And then we re really want to find out what, you know, what are you both seeing right now? What's going on out there in the workforce? What are, what are you seeing at the moment um, with the business? Great. So, well, yeah, go ahead, Mary. <laughs> I'll jump in real quick. Um, Mel and I were lucky enough to be introduced about six or seven years ago by a mutual friend in Westchester. And we knew that we, when we met, we knew we, we were aligned with our values and our style. And we really looked for ways to do business together. And that became the impetus of Spark Insight Coaching. And what we've seen is, you know, a, a big pivot and a, a, we've really had to transform the way we do business. We did a lot of on-site leadership, uh, graphic facilitation, coaching, and it has all become virtual, right, Mel? Yes. It's a completely different world. And I think at first we were really nervous because the the drive behind the coaching really is this one-on-one -on -one connection and and the chemistry that happens particularly in teams but the way that the virtual space uh, has brought surprises and and new ways of thinking and new ways of developing business for us has been really great there are things features within the virtual world that are impossible in in real world um, particularly breakout rooms that we're finding in, in the virtual space and ways to connect people uh, so our job really has taken sort of a new form of uh, more on the facilitating side, particularly with groups, just making sure that we bring meaning to virtual meetings because they've become so taxing. People sit at their tables and stare at the camera and get glossy eyed for the entire day. It's, it's sort of a, a burnout happening and that's what we're seeing. 
So we find that it's really important to conduct these meetings in a very mindful way. So that's really what we've been doing with our facilitation methods. It's adding a lot of visual um, stimulation and more small breakout groups to design and facilitate conversation to really get to the outcome of what people are looking for. But it's been a really interesting um, platform. Yeah. You know, have you found, is there any um, measurement in terms of how long people will be able to pay attention within a, a larger setting before you go to a breakout room? I mean, I've been a part of several, you know, Zoom invites and, and, and have been a part of many meetings. And sometimes you have more than 15 people or whatever. But when you then transition into that breakout room, it's like, I don't know, all of a sudden, a, a a breath of fresh air. It's like, oh, here I am. Now I'm only with two or three people. Is there a, is there just happen to be any kind of number that you can come up with that says, well, after 10 minutes, people really need to get into a breakout room or is it 20 minutes? Is there, I just figured I'd ask you that. Do you know if there's any kind of um, measurement that you've come across or what are you seeing out there when people are in these rooms? So we, we have noticed that the breakout rooms are really what drives the momentum of these meetings as well. So what you're saying, what you're feeling is really what's being echoed out there. I think that the intro, what we find is really important is to make sure that everyone's heard. So we were finding that people were making assumptions about what quarantine and work from home meant for everyone else based on what they were experiencing. And in order to sort of break that uh, in the very beginning and just give people voice, we go around and create sort of a, um, a forum for just a quick energy check, just to check in, similar to what you did with us, how are you doing during this period? I think it's really important to just give recognition that people are going through different hardships and um, and things things that are difficult for maybe you and I are not difficult for others and vice versa. So beyond that opening, we find that we need to set the stage pretty quickly within maybe five to six minutes. And quite frequently, we break out into our first breakout room, usually within seven to eight minutes of beginning. Okay. So there you go, seven or eight minutes. And I know that you've also shared some insight on these little icebreakers that you do at the beginning of a meeting, because quite frankly, myself included, a lot of people have never really even done a Zoom meeting before, right? I mean, maybe even in one way, shape, or form, but um, clearly we're doing a lot more of that now. And um, it's nice to have some, I don't want to say tricks, but there's. it's nice to have an idea of what you're going to do at the beginning of a meeting, particularly if you're going to run the meeting. You want to share maybe, Mary, one or two things that you typically do at the beginning of a meeting to help people get engaged or to sort of, um, soften the blow before you get right into a, a topic? We like to use what we call a, a simple icebreaker. And what that means is we can ask anyone, no matter how big the group is, to grab an object from their new work from home space and pick something up and tell us a little bit about what it means to you. That's a really nice one. Also to just use one word to describe how you're feeling that day which also allows for a little bit of vulnerability and really kind of helps people see that, you know, some people are anxious, some people are, are feeling hopeful. I mean, everybody feels different on different days. And I think somebody said to me, you know, we're not all in the same boat, right? We are all in the same storm, but on different boats. And we need to be cognizant and aware that people are having ups and downs during this time. So the, the icebreaker really, really helps with that and creates a nice, you know, shared awareness of what's going on in people's lives. Yes. And I, and I, and I thank you for that because I, I heard it from you at one time and, and I have used it and it has been very helpful. I'll also mention another one to do um, is to put in nicknames. We did this recently and we put everybody's nickname in there when they came into the meeting and it's sort of, prompted some interesting conversations about how you got that nickname and um, maybe some people don't want to really share all that but but it is it's interesting to see you know what's behind people and to to go a little deeper um, by learning more from them from from little things like that so so thanks for that um, 
One last thing before we before we break, uh, and again, you're listening to Westchester Talk Radio, produced by Shark Creative, um, and also made possible, by the way, uh, by our friends over at White Plains Hospital, um, where truthfully, they're really working hard on the front lines over there. So our hearts go out to them, uh, uh, as well as everybody else in the community that's, that's out on the front line. And also Hightower Westchester, uh, fiduciary wealth advisors, where transparency, knowledge, and integrity are paramount. Look for their podcast series on demand, which is at teams.hightoweradvisors.com forward slash team forward slash Westchester forward slash media room. Say that a few times. Anyhow, um, before we break, could you tell us what, um, what you see going forward? What do you see happening? Um, and we, clearly we've been doing this now for a couple of months. It's a new, you know, it's a new normal, but what are you seeing? down the line? How is this going to impact business um, virtually? And, and can you give us some insight on that? Yeah, so we are noticing that the, the biggest themes um, is a sort of feeling a loss of momentum. I think in the beginning, it was really rough for people to lose all the goods uh, from office politics, from the, the relationships to all the trust building and, and all the casual in-between conversations on the way to meetings. Um, but on the positive side of being out of the office, um, first of all, I think many men working from home realize that commuting for an hour to get to dinner um, it was, you know, just Com completely disappeared from from their psyche because they could just walk into the into the next room and be uh, at a dinner table with their entire family. I think this has made a profound impact, particularly um, in that balance between women working from home and men working from home. We found that it's really interesting that this has become an equalizer. I mean, Mary mentioned the metaphor for the same boat uh, or different boats, same storm. We really have seen that there is an equalizer in this that we are not finding that people are comparing um, one story from the other because we're all we're all doing very similar things so definitely the commuting being gone I think will um, make people pause about going into the office so much I think in particular men I think are having um, a big awakening about this of course um, it's not to say that women aren't in the same situation, but in, especially with things like maternity leave and sort of more of the societal conventions, there has been traditionally more work from home um, in, in those categories. So we're finding that it's really going to make an impact on whether or not people decide to go back into that sort of hamster wheel. Um, it's really impacting um, the, the moves outside of these massive urban areas. We're all, we're, already hearing from clients that 40% um, of their workforce are looking to move out of the cities and um, and get into smaller places or, or find better places to remotely work. Um, so these are going to be massive impacts. And then the positives from this virtual, um, from this virtual meeting um, forum is that people have become more comfortable. We weren't all camera ready. Um, we've all accepted imperfections, background imperfections, um, you know, body language imperfections, angle imperfections. We're, we're not really designed, all of us, for communicating our best message or productive message this way. Um, and so I think when it does go back to some more, um, a variety of mediums, that we'll be more comfortable and the trust will have gotten to a different place because we've all been confined to our virtual backgrounds and our imperfections. So that's, that's a really positive thing. Right on cue, I figured I'd change the background to a little shark there. Uh, well, listen, you know, well said, guys. It's it's really been um, a pleasure getting to know you both, uh, Mary Olson Menzel, Mel Shabazian. Uh, it, it's a pleasure. Uh, you know, we wish you luck with Spark Insight Coaching, and um, hopefully we hear more from you both, and uh, we'll go from there and expand on this. But again, you're listening to Westchester Talk Radio, which is produced by Shark Creative and made possible by our other friends over at Park Sterling Realty and also Wartburg Home Healthcare and Rehabilitation. You've been listening to episode 21 of Isolation Therapy. We'll be back again with more guests after this.